I have managed to make color photos purely from black and white film. How'd I do it? Magic. Pure dark wizard magic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, it was Photoshop. But I'm gonna show you the whole process in this video and share some of my results. So stay tuned. So the technique I used to create color photos from black and white film is not new by any means. I didn't discover this. This is in fact the oldest process that I know of uh, that has been used to create color photos. It's called the three color process. And essentially what you do is you take three black and white photos of the same subject in exactly the same spot and you use different color filters. Now back when they were originally doing this at the end of the 1800s and early 1900s, they had to actually use a chemical process to combine those different colors into one image. Now I don't have to do all that because I'm better than them and I have Photoshop and a computer and just a lot of stuff is better nowadays, okay? So what I did is I loaded some black and white film in my camera and I went out, set it up on a tripod and took three photos, one after another using a red filter, photo, green filter, photo, blue filter, photo. Then I took them into Photoshop on my computer, combined them all in the different color channels and voila, you have a color photo. It really is that simple. But if you wanna be successful and you wanna have this actually work out for you instead of looking like garbage, there's some things I gotta tell you first. Number one, as I mentioned, you're gonna need filters. A red filter, a green filter, and a blue filter. These filters actually came with the Fresnel attachment I have for my light, and I use them because I have them. These are the only color filters I have, and they're not actually that great. If you look through them, they're really foggy, which uh, you'll see has sort of affected the photos, uh, the, the final outcome. They don't have a lot of visual integrity. They're not very clear, but they still work. So if you're gonna do this yourself, basically the better filters you get, the better your photos are gonna turn out. If you actually get glass filters that are uh, proper colors that are blocking out every other uh, wavelength of color except the one that they represent, then you're gonna have a better outcome. But if you don't, you can use whatever you have, like I did. Number two, get a sturdy ass tripod. I'm serious. Any little movements in your camera between photos is gonna show up as a a color artifact when you're trying to stitch them together. So get a tripod that is gonna lock your camera down tight. I've got a ton of tripods because I'm a hoarder, but the one I decided to use was this one here, this David and Sanford cinema tripod that is really hefty and it's got some really nice big handles so I can lock it down. Get yourself a steady tripod. It's gonna save you when you're trying to stitch these together. Number three, make sure that your subject does not move between photos. Most of the shots that I took were outside and included trees and that was a big mistake. Leaves blow in the wind, even if it's not windy, and those little movements leave color artifacts in your photos. So if you can help it, take a photo of something that's not moving, static, still life. If you're taking a portrait of someone, make sure it's someone who can remain super, super still. Portraits of dead people are great for this technique. Number four, this is the last one. Use film that has lots of contrast. From my personal tests, the soft, low contrast, high dynamic range film, black and white film, just doesn't give you nice punchy colors like high contrast film does. Also, you can shoot this on digital. If your camera has a black and white mode, or even if it doesn't, you can convert the photos to black and white, still use the filters, and then use them in Photoshop. But in this video, we're gonna focus on film because that's what I shot on. All right, enough with the tips. Let's actually take a look at the photos. And then after that, we'll look at how to create one in Photoshop. You better enjoy these photos because I spent a lot of time on this.
unexpected holiday. The photo zine that everyone is talking about. Order your copy today at checkoutjacob.com slash shop. That first batch of photos I took were all taken on this, including the one of Birgit, which is my favorite. Um, this is my Zenza Bronica ETRSI medium format camera. It's a 645 camera. And this is how you advance the film. And you can see just a little bit of motion as you do this, even if you have it on the tripod, but I still loved all the photos that came from this first roll that were taken on this camera. The second roll was taken with my Pentax K1000, which is one of my favorite cameras ever made. I love this thing, you can still get them super cheap. Because this is a manually advancing film camera, there's still lots of motion in the photos when I took it. I wish I had thought about that a little bit more before I decided to use this camera on the second roll. Because if I had, I would have instead used my Canon Rebel G2 which is a relatively new film DSLR. I got this in the early 2000s when I was in high school. But the thing is, with this, you set it down, you take a picture, and it auto advances the film. There's very, very little movement of the camera, if any. The only thing is gonna be that mirror slapping up and down. So if I were to do this again in the future, I would use a camera that has manual focus like this one, manual exposure, and auto advances the film. So there's as minimal movement as possible. All right, as mentioned, you're gonna need Photoshop, but before we dive into Photoshop, let's take a look at the folder that houses the photos that I took, because this is very important. While you're taking your photos, I highly, highly suggest, in fact, I think it's sort of necessary that you always use the filters in the same order. I myself first took a red filter, then I took the green filter, and then I took the blue filter. RGB, it was easiest to remember. But if you make sure that you're in the same order every single time, then you're not gonna get confused when you bring these black and white photos into Photoshop. Because if you confuse which photo is which, your photo's not gonna look like real life. The, the colors aren't gonna look accurate. And you'll see that a little bit further down with a few of these photos. I think I screwed up um, naming the colors when I was scanning them in and they just look wonky. But we'll get to that. First things first, you can see here, I have my color versions here, but you can also see I have across the street blue, across the street green, across the street red. I labeled every single one of them. Uh, the first photo we're gonna do is the photo of Birgit because I really love the way it turned out. So you can see here, Birgit blue, Birgit green, Birgit red. What I do, first open Photoshop, and then I will grab each of these photos, highlight them all, control click, and I'll drag them into Photoshop. And what it'll do is it'll open up each photo as its own project. You can see all three tabs up here. And what I've been doing is I've just been working from the blue photo. So I'll leave it as is. I'll go over to the red photo. I'll unlock it. I'll unlock the layer. Control A or Command A to highlight everything. And then Control C to copy it. And then when I do, I'll come back over here to the blue one, which will be our base photo and I'll go over to here to the channels. Now, sometimes you'll just see there's one that says gray. If that's the case, it means that you scanned your photos in, in black and white, there's no color information, that's fine. All you need to do is come up here to image, go to mode, and make sure RGB color is checked instead of grayscale. All right, so if you remember, we copied our red image, it's in our clipboard. We're gonna come over here to the color channels, and we're gonna click on red, and we're gonna paste. Control V to paste. It's there. We'll come back to it and make some adjustments, but it's there for right now. You can see if I choose RGB, it looks weird. It looks sort of cool actually, but it looks weird. But you can see what's happening, which is cool. All right, let's go to the green image. Control A, Control C. Come back over here, select the green layer in the color channels and paste. So now we have all of our color and you can actually see the building in the background looking red like it does in real life that's great but we need to make a lot of adjustments we need to make sure that everything lines up so that the colors are completely accurate so what we're going to do is we're going to go one layer at a time so we'll leave the blue layer on but we're going to turn off the green layer and just work on moving the red layer so we'll make sure it's highlighted and then i'll use the arrow keys to move up and down and what i'll do by uh, holding alt and using my scroll wheel i'll zoom in and look at a particular part of the image and make sure that that part of the image actually matches up. So basically you wanna make sure that your lines are matching perfectly. You don't want any overlapping 
areas. So you can see here on her shoulder, there's a little bit of overlap. So I'm gonna go up and over. But then you see over here, there's a little bit of overlap on her hood. The reason for that is because she probably moved a little bit, which is fine. Humans move, we're live. You can see there's a little bit on the drawstring on her hood. That's fine, it probably blew in the wind or something. But if we zoom out, look at the rest of the photo, I think it looks pretty good. So now that that's good, we got the red and the blue colors, the red and the blue channels squared away. I'm gonna turn off red and I'm gonna turn on green and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing. You can just grab and move like that. You don't have to use the arrow keys, but to get the fine tuning, I'll make sure to use the arrow keys. And there we go, that's pretty good. Just right, right away, right there. So now I'm gonna make sure all color channels are on and voila, we have a color photo. Isn't that amazing? We went from this to a color photo. And in this photo particularly, the colors are pretty dang accurate. This is a, a, a more muted version of the yellow of her jacket and the building across the street is red like this. So I'm super happy with how this photo turned out. What you can do afterward is you can grab the marquee tool and you can crop in. If you don't wanna see the colors on the edges here, you just crop in and I have a keyboard shortcut to crop. If you don't have a keyboard shortcut, you can go up here to image and crop. But once you do that, bam, you have a color image from black and white photos. As I mentioned, this one turned out great, but we do have quite a few others that didn't turn out quite as well for various reasons. Let me open up one of those and show you why. So here is a photo I took in my backyard and you can see it just, it's not a good photo. Um, compositionally it's not a good photo but also if we look at how the colors combined it's not good and I knew it wasn't gonna turn out well when I took the photo it was a windy day but I wanted to see what was gonna happen so that I could share it with you so if we zoom in you can see here in the building across the alley everything is good it's a little overexposed but the awning over here is green just like it is in real life everything is uh, relatively sharp but as soon as we zoom out a little bit and we look at this tree you can see the leaves were just moving like crazy. Anytime you see just a, a color artifact like that, it means that the leaf was there in that particular color's photo, but it's not in the others. <laughs> Huge example of that right here. The leaves in the red photo were down. In the blue photo, they were up here. If we look at this photo, which overall was more successful than the last one, um, you'll still see some weird stuff. So right here, there's like a bright green spot, a bright blue spot here, bright bright red spot right here. The reason for that is that when I took this photo in the first roll, it was sprinkling a little bit outside and there actually got some water droplets on the filters that I was using. And because that area is not in any of the other photos, it's going to show up as a bright green spot. You can also see over here, I've got like a, a red dot. That was just probably a speck of dust or something when I scanned that particular negative. Even down here in this black part, you can see that this area is a little bit more green and yellow, and this is a bluer color. So if you want your photos to turn out pristine, if you want them to look like real color photos when you're taking them from black and white photos, you have to control as much of the scene as possible. Make sure the lighting doesn't change, make sure nothing's moving. And if you do that, you'll have a convincing photo with no color artifacts. So, what did you think of the photos? What do you think about this process? Are you gonna try this yourself? What's your social security number? How old are you? Where do you live? Make sure to answer all those questions in the comments below so that I get that interaction. I need it. My channel is floundering right now because I hardly ever upload. That's the video. This was a really fun experiment and I've got tons of other film experiments lined up that I'm really curious about trying, stuff that I actually have tried that I'm going to show in the future here on the channel. And if you like this, make sure that you give me a thumbs up. But that's all for now. Thank you all very much for watching. I always appreciate it. Don't forget to create and explore. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Ow. Bye.